Hi friends, today we're going to do some stamp carving. I've got a few of my old stamps out that I've carved. This is a hand, these are some pencils, this is just a decorative border. I've got some others somewhere else but don't know where they are. A lovely spiral, I love a spiral. These are great to use on a gel plate, these larger ones. Here's a goddess, that's a runner, you can't see it very well. That's a Celtic pattern and on the other side is another goddess. Whoops, that's a leaf. This is a fish. That's got slightly damaged, unfortunately. I've got some beetles somewhere and some words somewhere, but no idea where. So there's a few of them. And we're going to do some stamp carving today. And I'll show you some of the materials I use. First of all, tools. I have a little tin. This is what this is my go-to tool kit. It's a nice wooden handle. Little rubber bits, there's a bit of a border there. I haven't used that. Was another little corner piece. I haven't used that much. And I've got some odds odd bits that I save because you can still use the tiny bits. Anyway, this kit is a lovely wooden handle and it's got how many? One, two, three, four, five pieces with different tool shapes and I'll show you more of those later. But just slots in and to get them out again it's got this wooden dowel that you poke in the end and pop it out. That's my favourite go-to set. I don't know if it's still available now but I do know this is available. This is a great little set and very economical. They don't cost a lot to buy. And this comes with five pieces as well. And instead of using the wooden dowel, it's a plastic handle, which is fine. You pop your pieces in. Got to figure out which way it goes that way. <laughs> then you screw that tight and then you carve away. Now, the only disadvantage to these is that the quality of the blade is you know adequate but you can't sharpen them much you can sharpen them a little bit so once they're once they've gone blunt there's not a lot you can do really whereas if you buy more expensive ones I've got this oh there's another there's another kit that I have as well I'll show you this one first I used I bought a load of these when I was teaching a class a while quite a while ago now oh here's another one of the wooden handle ones and yes, I, I supplied them in the class, which is why I've got several <laughs> different kits. Um, yeah, the name of it is A Big Lino, Lino Cutting Tools, <laughs> and they're made in Germany. You can still get these, I'm sure, but these are the most commonly available ones. And it's a lovely kit, and as I say, very inexpensive. So, and these are great because you can. If you're out some, you know, going out for the day or you're going on holiday and you want to take a little bit of something with you, you just pop one of those in your pocket, a little bit of this rubber stuff, I'll talk about that more in a minute, a pencil so you can dry it your design and that's it, you're away. Anyway, I've also got, because I've done a little bit of wood cutting as well as I do lino cutting, I've also got this wood cutting set. This is good because it's got larger pieces and you can sharpen these because they're better quality. These are a Japanese wood carving set. Very inexpensive, I say inexpensive, a lot more expensive than a kit like this. Probably four times the price. But even so, compared to a lot of lino cutting and wood cutting tools, it's very economical. And also what I like about them is they're very comfortable to hold in your hand because it's like a soft rubber. Lovely, I love that kit, it's a favorite of mine. Uh, what I'd also like about it is it's got some larger, wider tools for cutting out larger areas, which is very useful. So that is are the cutting tools. So I'm going to use this kit. Material now to cut. An, an ordinary eraser is great. I buy these, they're a pound. I used to get them from the factory shop when I lived up in Scotland. And I'd buy several of them because they're very good. And you can get several stamps out of that. You can use, the other thing is, because it's fairly thick, you can cut on both sides. So you get twice the value for that. In fact, you can do that with these. You can cut on both sides, as, as I did on this one. I don't think I've done it on any of the others. So that's something worth bearing in mind, that you can get a lot out of this. And it carves beautifully. I've done some, I don't know if you can see those marks there. I've done some cutting there. I was just uh, sharpening my tools and checking how well they were working. And there's smaller ones as well, that are thinner, perfectly good. But you can also purchase special lino cutting or stamp rubber cutting 
material from various shops uh jackson art supply them uh where else have i purchased it from i think the saa i know i don't know jackson's i know do sell it they have the white stuff and they have the pink stuff i prefer the pink stuff that's this stuff it's slightly firmer slightly harder to cut but it's less likely to break i find this stuff brilliant i love it it's so easy to cut doesn't hurt your hands but it can crumble and break and this is what's happened to my fish a bit of this line has crumbled off and broken so you do have that danger but it's so in you know it's so economical well if you buy a big slab and cut it up into smaller pieces it saves a lot of money that way so the initial outlay is high but then the little pieces you use aren't aren't expensive at all but if you if you're after economy just buy erasers all sorts of erasers so yes i've got um yes you can buy the pink stuff and you can buy the white stuff this is about a centimeter thick and you can carve both sides. I think I said that a minute ago. <laughs> Sorry, I'm repeating myself. Also, I'm, I do actual lino cuts, which I don't think I've talked about on my channel, but you can actually buy lino, which is great. It's very thin. This is 3.2 millimeter thick. You could buy thicker. You could buy different color lino. I tend to just buy the standard gray. Um, and I love it. I love the smell. I have to sniff. Oh, I love the smell of it. It takes me back to my college days. <laughs> and um, you can cut bits off and carve into that. Obviously, you can't carve both sides because one side is hessian backed. But that's fine. And this is very economical as well. I buy the 12 by 12 piece and I cut it down to the sizes I need. It is much harder to cut on your hands. Uh, you can warm it up first with a hairdryer. Warm it up and it's slightly easier to cut. We used to put it on a warm plate. At the in the printmaking studio to warm it up and then it's easier to carve but still it is a lot harder to carve than this stuff so there's your options for materials now inks when it comes to inks any ink will do actually you can use your stamping inks I use my stays on an awful lot when I'm doing these this is what I've used for these mostly and I haven't tried my distress inks but generally it's the stays on black although you know I don't know why I don't use other colors I think I do that's I think I've used a bluey color on that one so these work great and they yeah I can recommend those but if you're into lino cutting which is a different ball game you can purchase proper relief inks from various places there's there's Jackson's and there's Lawrence Art and this is the Cranfield Safe Wash Relief Inks. It is, it, it is oil-based, but it's easy to clean up. When I was at university, we used to use solvent for cleaning up. These days, the clean-up is clean. We don't use solvent. And this, you just use a bit of soap, dish soap and oil to clean up. And it's, it works marvellous. Uh, the Australian printmakers are the ones that started this cleaner use of stu you know working in the studio without solvents and it took us a while over here to pick up on the idea but now they do a lot of printmaking studios now don't use solvents thank goodness but yes so that's more expensive but it's it's a lovely it's lovely for proper lino prints but you can also use it on your stamps but for general it takes longer to dry so if you're working in a book or a journal or something I don't really recommend this, but it's great if you're doing prints to sell or to display, which take, which you, know, you can allow more time for them to dry. You can also use your acrylic paints. I have my System 3s decanted into this. There's one thing to be careful about with the acrylic paints is to get them off. Otherwise, the paints will ruin the lines a little bit by falling into the gaps and filling it up a little bit. So. I don't really recommend that, but you can do it if you want to use acrylics instead of inks. The reason why I use, I tend to use stays on is because they're water soluble. So if I want to add color on top with watercolor or something, I can, but you can with acrylics as well. So that could be the reason why you use these, but I recommend the stays on really. So, so the fun bit now is we're going to do a little bit of carving. Uh, shall I use, I think I'll use, we'll use a bit of this. So I'm going to cut a slice off. Actually, before I cut it, I'm going to think about the design I want to do. Oh, gosh, this has gone a bit bendy. Let me think about the design I want to do. Um, quite into plants at the moment. I oh, know, I'm going to do a ginkgo leaf. So, I'm draw it straight onto that. But if you're not confident with drawing straight onto your material, draw on a piece of paper 
And then just, in fact, I'll do that now. I'll do that now. Do you think I've got a piece of paper in here? <laughs> I do have a piece of paper in here. I have several pieces of paper. Right, piece of paper. I'm going to draw a ginkgo leaf out. If I find the pencil. A softer pencil is best. This is a 4B. Anything from 2B upwards is great now. Let's get an idea of the size I'm working on. I'll go for that sort of size. So an ink, a ginkgo leaf stem. I'll go through like that. Because I like it to go diagonally across the design. It's such a pretty shape. Here's um, a mask. And that sort of shape. And it goes up into this lovely heart shape. And these are wobbly. And then there's usually a lovely little V there, which I really like. And then through there like that. Let's finish the stem. So I've got to reinforce this now. Pressing down quite firmly with the pencil. And then there's usually a strong line in the middle there like that. And then there's quite often lines radiating out. I'm going to carve a few of those in. Not all of them, obviously, because there's quite a lot. Like that. Do some broken ones. That's just to give me an idea of how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go over once more with the pencil. I'm going to thicken up that line a lot. Now you don't have to stick hard and fast to the image you've got. Or we'll do like a ginkgo leaf. This would be nice to put on. I tell you what I like to do, I haven't done it for ages, is when I'm sending things in the post, is to decorate the envelope with some of my hand, hand carved stamps. In fact, that's probably where some of my other stamps are, my mail art ones. There, hopefully. Hopefully that will transfer. Let's try to see. And with your any tool, uh, back of a pencil handle, I'm using a bone folder. Rub the back of the paper onto the rubber or eraser. Rubber means something else in different countries, doesn't it? So we call an eraser a rubber because they were made out of rubber. So were other things, so let's not go into that. <laughs> Hopefully, let's see. Oh, it's transferred, be transferred beautifully. You need a bit more of that stem there. There you go, your image is transferred. So now I'm going to trim it down. Now I know where I'm going. I haven't got my metal ruler handy, but trimming them down is quite easy. So very carefully cut through. If you're working with children, I'd do this bit yourself if I were you. There we go. I think we're through. That's it. And then I can carve on that at a later date and obviously both sides. So, oh, I love this. So I'll show you now how the method I use to cut. So where's my tin? I do love a tin for this sort of thing, don't you? Tins are great. I've got to tip them out. I usually start with my very fine, my finest V tool. Now the tools come in various shapes. You usually get one that's a U, put a bit of paper behind, and then I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. That's a V shape and that's a U shape. I always start off with the smallest V I've got. They come in different sizes. There's, di there's different sized U's. That's narrower than that one. And there's also a knife. I don't tend to use that. Put that away. But I do use the U's and the V's. How many V's have I got? I think there's usually two V's and it's all U's. Oh, no, the, that's a V. So there's a larger and a smaller V. So I always start off with the smallest V. We'll use the other tools in a little bit. Pop this in the handle. And I go around the, the outline. Now, when you're carving, I'm doing that wrong, you see. I've got my hand there. If I slipped, 
I would put a very sharp blade into my finger. Don't do what I do. <laughs> what you should have is your other hand away from the design. When I'm working on a larger lino piece, I use a board, a special board that clips onto the side of the desk and stops things moving around. And then you don't, and then you don't have to hold your piece. I go round the edge, first of all. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way that a lot of people, see I'm doing it again. It's very difficult when you're working with a small piece not to have your fingers in the wrong place. So I'm creating a nice gouge there. I do find doing a lot of carving is quite painful on the hands. So I tend to only do a little bit at a time, but I do love it. There's something very zen-like doing this. And I find it very relaxing until I make a mistake, <laughs> which happens. Yes, it's all too easy to slip and hurt yourself. So I'm not sure whether I'd recommend doing this with very young children. I think older children can do this, but I would stock up on some plasters <laughs> because accidents will probably happen with children. But you know, you've got to suffer for your art. <laughs> there, there, I've gone around the edge now. And now this is where I change tools and I'll use a larger C. Oh, I think before I change, actually, I'm going to do, do the marks on the inside. No, I think I'll use a larger V for that. Otherwise, they won't stand out too well. One thing you've got to bear in mind is if your marks are too fine, they don't print too well. Right, so we'll use the larger U shape now. Which one shall we use? We'll use the biggest. And then you can clear out a lot of area quite quickly. So now I shall zoom in a little bit. So now I'm going round where I've cut before. And now I'm picking out, I'm cutting out larger areas. And I'm still going around the shape for the time being. This cuts quite well, this eraser. I can recommend it if you can get hold of this sort of thing. I think some pound shops have them as well. They just come from China, so they should be worldwide, really. Some of these large Chinese companies probably have them. Quite cheap. These are great to decorate art journal pages. That's when I did. That's what I designed the fish, the goddess, and the Celtic. I think she's a goddess as well. And the runner. I remember that. It's when I was doing a lot of running. So yes, these were for my tiny journal. I remember that. But the larger ones are for gel printing. Well, they're for all sorts actually, but I think I intended them for gel printing. So there's lots of uses for these. I quite like the creativity of making your own stamps. Something rather cool about that. So I bet a lot of you have done this yourselves, but if you're new to it, do let me know. I'd love to know, especially if you know, I've seen how straightforward it is and it's an economical hobby. How you, you know, now you've seen that you can do it quite cheaply. And now I've cut away around the design a fair bit. I can now get rid of all this excess here. So I'm going to use, this is where I get out the big guns. You don't need to do this. You can carry on doing it with the U tool, but this is where I get the wider one and you can cut out large areas all at once. Oh gosh, that's so easy. <laughs> Cuts beautifully. I sharpened these the other day. I've got a sharpening kit, which you don't need. You absolutely don't need it if you're, if you're just using just doing a few stamps here and there. Oh, there's some lovely accounts on Instagram of people that do carve their own stamps and make some beautiful patterns. Absolutely love them, very inspiring. In fact, throughout December, Carve December was going on. I find that a little bit too much to do a carve a day. 
but there were some lovely ones being done. And sometimes just the simplest of designs works beautifully. Let's get this corner off because that will print otherwise. Now you could actually take a knife and cut round that entire design, but that's a bit too difficult for me. This is the easiest method. I mean, cutting through all of that would be a pain. And I don't mind if some of these lines pick up because I quite like the effect. Because it says this is hand carved, which is always a good thing. Oh, I shouldn't put my finger there. <laughs> I'm so naughty. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. <laughs> is that how the saying goes? Let's get rid of that bit there. And you should carve away from the design. I just carved into the design. I shouldn't do that because you can slip and cut through your design. So another thing you shouldn't do. Oh dear. So while since I've done this, I'm forgetting all the shoulds and shouldn'ts. <laughs> right, I'm going to go along this edge. Get that off. Sorry, you probably can't see what I'm doing now. Hands in the way, I was just holding the piece down. Actually, having it on a surface that doesn't slip is kind of useful as well. Right, let's try and do it the proper way. So yes, I could have done this quite well with the largest of the U shape here. I mean, it's, this isn't a lot larger, just a couple of millimetres larger. It just makes it a little bit quicker, but obviously you don't need that. It's just me speeding up the process because obviously you probably don't want to see me spending hours carving. We want to get to the stamping pit, don't we? <laughs> the fun bit. You can also, if you've got strong enough tools, your small kits probably won't do it. If you've got a block of wood, you can carve into that. Oh, and as for the lino, you can actually use flooring lino, because that's where it based, you know, it came from. This is when lino cutting started, because so traditionally people cut with wood cuts. And then jute and lino was invented in the, I can't remember when now, Sometime in the 1800s, I think. I don't think it was the 1700s. And for some reason, printmakers decided to try carving into that. <laughs> like you do. And then lino carving got very popular because it's a lot easier than wood carving, wood cutting, and cheaper, very cheap. Which is always good. My favourite art supplies <laughs> are either free or cheap. <laughs> you could do a test print. There's a bit there that I haven't carved away. I'll show you how to test it actually without actually inking it. But first of all, I'm going to go back in with one of the V tools, the largest of the V tools, and I'm going to carve in some of these decorative lines. That's nice. The pits get stuck in there. There we go. Right. What I'm doing here is I'm, as I'm going towards the end, I'm lifting the tool slightly. So I'm starting off with it digging in, and then as I go near the end, I'm lifting it, um, and then I'm getting a bit of a point, which is quite effective. Oh, I'll show you some of the other marks you can make. You don't have to do lines. There's lots of other cool marks you can make. Because you may not want to do something representative. You may just want pattern. And I'll show you how. An easy way that you could do some nice pattern effects. Yeah, so that's ready to go. Right, while I'm at it, I'm going to show you some of the effects you can create. Put that aside for a minute. Now, there I started off digging in deep and then I lifted up very slowly and gently and got a point but you can just do very lightly along there so you can get different thicknesses that's me digging in deeper so you can see that's a thinner line and a wider line so you don't necessarily need a huge range of tools a lot of it is how you apply it what you could do if you want to just make a pattern you can just do lots of little dashes pieces out. That's quite effective if you want to create a nice pattern. You could do some digger, diggy pieces, much like that. You can also do circles. I'll show you how to do a circle. Actually, that's easier with a U shape. Let's get this U in there. 
U shape is more circular to start with, so that makes life a lot easier. There, that's a much nicer circle there. Right, so that's a couple of marks. There's lots of, just try it out, there's lots of different marks you can make. So, to test this out, with a thinnish piece of paper, you do a rubbing like this. So before you get any ink out, just to see how you think it's going to look. Yes, I like that. So if you're happy, oh, I do like that, you can stamp it. Okay, let's use the Jets Black. I always get excited when I'm stamping a new stamp. And apply lots of ink. Well, the first, I often find the first inking isn't so good. It takes a while to build up. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that lovely against the green? Ooh. Stamp it. Ta-da! Now, we have what we call, in the trade, around the edges, a bit of noise. Now, personally, I like that because it says to me that's a hand-printed piece. But if you want to get rid of those, you can now see on the stamp bits of black around the edges. You can carve those off now. Uh, let's do that. I can use the larger handled one. I'm going to get rid of some of these pieces. And we'll see if we get um, a cleaner stamp. But as I say, I quite like it. But there's a personal preference thing because not everyone does. So this is what they call when you're trying it out. Your first one is called a proof. Oh, I do like that. I'm so happy with that. I'm ridiculously happy. I'll be stamping ginkgo leaves on everything now. If you get anything in the post from me, it's going to have a ginkgo leaf on it. <laughs> which reminds me I need to get on with my challenges. I must apologise for being so lax on that. I've had such a busy January, to be honest. I don't know how I've managed to do what I've managed to do. Uh, my shop has been really busy. My Etsy shop with my stencil sales have been lovely and busy. Not only stencils, actually. All sorts. So that's been really great. But of course, that's kept me on my toes a little bit. <laughs> right, so let's do that again. And we'll see if we've got less noise. They call it noise in the trade. <laughs> I can still see some. Right, inky, inky, ink. Oh, I love that green and black, don't you? Let's try that again. Pressing it down firmly. Yes, that's lovely. That's less noise now, but I can still see some bits. I can get rid of those if I want, but I'm happy with that the way it is. I love it. So there we go. Very simple and quick introduction to making your own stamps. I hope you have a go at this. As I say, the kits aren't expensive and the eraser material is so not expensive. It, you can make it as expensive or as economical as you like lots of fun and it's creating your own rubber stamps that are unique to you no one else can do exactly what you can do that's what i like about art so thank you very much for watching i've really enjoyed showing you this i've enjoyed having a little carving session Ooh. if you enjoyed the video please press the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe it's lovely to have new people here do let me know if you do that i love to uh, chat with new people and if you want to join my Patreon, the link is down in the description. If you want to go and see my Etsy shop for stencil designs, the link is down in the description. I don't know what else is down. On my Instagram, I've got, um, I've been working on gel prints throughout January. So there's lots of things you may not have seen down in my Instagram, also down in my description. I think that's everything. And um, let's have a quick shot of the kitten. Here she is, here she is. Miss Trouble, oh, here she is. Miss Trouble. <laughs> She's growing. She's a big girl. She's due to her final injections next week and then spaying, which I'm not looking forward to. But anyway, so <laughs> thumbs up for Miss Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.